يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم واشكروا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون Oh, you who believe, eat of the good things of Allah, but show gratitude for those things. If you are truly worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most blessed things that we have in this world is food. It brings us together. It nourishes our bodies. It sustains us. And then the pleasure of food itself. This is a great gift. Allah could have made brackish water that we had to drink. He could have given us rocks that we had to crush as our nutrition. But He gave us cherries and grapes and figs. He gave us very varieties of meats. He gave us all of the blessings that the earth brings forth. What, is, what does Allah ask us? Shukr. اعملوا آل داود شكرا وقليل من عبادي الشكور Work. Do things out of gratitude, O oh, Al Dawood, and how few of my servants are always grateful. Always grateful. Awalam akun abdan shakura. This is, he didn't say, Awalam akun abdan shakira. Shouldn't I be a grateful servant? Shakir, you can be shakir one time or another time. When you're shakur, it's called sigha mubalagha. It's the form of hyperbole. It means you're always grateful. Our Prophet ﷺ was always in a state of gratitude. This was his, his whole experience of the world of gratitude. One of the worst things about modern times is ingratitude is cultivated in people. They're, in, they're ungrateful for the police. They're ungrateful for government. They're ungrateful for their education. They're ungrateful for everything. People just complain all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ الشديد. Your Lord has declared, if you're grateful, I will increase you in blessings to be grateful for. But if you are an ingrate, if you lack gratitude, in fact, if you show ingratitude, I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. This is a metaphysical equation. Gratitude equals increase in blessings. Ingratitude equals decrease in blessings. This is a qaida, it's a law. It's a metaphysical law that's as true as the Newtonian physics that you learned in high school. If you're ungrateful, then Allah will give you more to be ungrateful about, more to whine about. You think it's bad now? You have no idea how bad it can get. Read history to know how bad it can get. You think Syria is bad? Read about the Mongol invasion. They didn't have any place to flee to. You, th you think the Muslims are having tribulation in America? Read about Nazi Germany and what happened to the Jews. We have to be grateful because if we're ungrateful and always complaining, Allah is going to give you more to complain about. I was in one of the Gulf states and somebody was complaining about the price of gasoline, the taxi driver, 25 cents at the time. <laughs> now it's a lot higher. Why? Because they keep complaining. Go ahead, complain all you want. Because if you love to complain, Allah will give you plenty to complain about. But if you want to show gratitude, Allah will give you plenty to show gratitude about. They did a study at Davis it's called the gratitude study for depressed people. They had them write down every day, every morning, 10 things they were grateful for. Over a period of a month, people's depression started being lifted. If you start counting the blessings of Allah, you'll never come to an end. And you can count blessings like just eyelashes. The people don't have eyelashes. They fall out. The eyelashes are a wonderful blessing. Or some people have dry eyes. So if you have moisture in your eyes, what a blessing. If you have teeth, what a blessing. If you don't have teeth, if you have dentures, what a blessing. There are people that don't have dentures. If you lose one arm, what a blessing. You didn't lose both arms. If you lose both arms, what a blessing. Now they have prosthetic devices that enable you to do things. Ibn Abbas said, in every tribulation in dunya, there are three blessings hidden that you have to recognize. The first, is that it could have been worse. The second is that it's in your dunya and not in your deen. 
And the third, in your worldly affairs and not in your religious affairs. And the third, it's in this world and not in the next. And you should be grateful for that. People now are complaining. Allah said, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala." He's going to try you to see who of you are the best in actions. وَلَا نُبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We're going to try you. لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ You will be tried in your, in your wealth and in your lives. وَلَا تَسْمَعُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْرِكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أَشَرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا Allah told us, you're going to hear all these people telling how horrible you are and how terrible your religion is. Allah said that. What does He say? How's our response? What's our response? وَإِنْ تَصْبِرُوا And if you show patience, وَتَتَّقُوا And show piety, restraint, control yourself. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Because that is at the essence of this matter. That is at the essence of this matter. This is our deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً وَضَرْبَ اللَّهُمْ مَثَلًا قَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّ يَأْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ فَأَذَاقَهَ اللَّهُ لِبَاسَ الْجُوعِ وَالْخَوْفِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ Allah strikes a similitude for you to think. A similitude. Allah strikes a similitude for you to reflect. A township, a city, a hamlet that was peaceful. It was tranquil. It had provision in abundance coming from every place. Like we have today, we eat berries from Chile, and we drink tea from China, and we have rice from India, basmati rice in your homes from India. You get all this blessing from all over the world. So what did they do? Instead of saying, Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah, Alhamdulillah, kafarat bi anamillah. They were ingra- ungrateful. This is the meaning of kufr. Kufr is ingratitude. You can be a Muslim and be a kafir in the meaning that you're, in, you're an ingrate. Right? This is ingratitude. That's the essence of kufr. The essence of Islam is gratitude, shukr, a feeling of blessing that Allah has given. The biggest blessing is that we exist. Ni'mat al-ijad wa ni'mat al-indad. The blessing of giving us our existence and then sustaining our existence. He could take away that sustenance at any time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He, he enveloped that city in hunger, look, of the blessing of food, in hunger and terror. Hunger and terror. Libas al ju'i wal khawfi. Why? Bima, ba sababiya. What's the cause? Because of their ungratefulness. And this is what we've lost an understanding of our religion. We look at all these events and we don't see the real source of these events. Ingratitude. If we want to change the world, we have to change our state and our attitude about all these blessings that we've been given. Government is a blessing. Even the worst form of government is better than anarchy. Even a tyranny is better. This Malik ibn Anas said this. These, these weren't ignorant people. These were genius people. Because he lived through civil wars. He saw what happens when things break down. The people of Damascus, six years ago, were eating beautiful food. They had good clothes. It was one of the few countries on the planet that was actually self-sustained. And now, all of this tribulation. And if you say, you know, why is it happening to them and not us? Maybe because Allah loves them more. Because we know Ahl Sham have a maqam. So Allah will all of the, 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 the torment of the akhirah, He'll put it in the dunya for a short period, and then they go back to Allah completely free of any tribulation or punishment. Maybe it's the places that aren't being afflicted, that deserve to be afflicted, that should be worried. This is the way Muslims traditionally looked at things. When the Mughal came down, when the Mongols came down, they didn't say, these evil Mongols. They said, هَذَا عَذَا بَعْثُ عَلَيْنَا لِذُنُوبِنَا this is a punishment God has sent to us because of our wrong actions. That's how they looked at it. Muslims don't look at that anymore. Evil America, evil Israel, evil... Okay, good. Allahumma marika mulk tutil murka man tasha. Allah put them in power. He says He gives power to whomever He pleases. Muslim had it. If Muslims had nuclear weapons right now with the idiots that we have, 
We would have nuclear conflagrations all over. Allah knows what He's doing. Allah knows who He gives power to. Yes, they abuse their power, but to what degree? Who would be worse? People want the destruction of America? Well, let's see what happens when China gets the world power. See if there's going to be an Abu Ghraib that you hear about. See if there's going to be any way, recourse to redressing any wrong. Allah Ta'ala Alam, I don't know. But sometimes the worst things are, are answered prayers. We don't know. It's a different way of looking at the world. People don't want to look at it that way. But I read the Quran and the Quran, it comes back to me. When they were asked, where did this calamity come from? Allah says, It's from your own selves. It didn't say, oh, it's from those evil Quraysh. Those evil Quraysh. No. Allah wanted the Quraysh to become Muslim. دَخَلْ عَلَيْهِمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَادَ تَقُولُوا تَقُولُوا رَبِيَّةِ أَخُمْ كَرِيمٌ إِبْنُ أَخِمْ كَرِيمٌ You're a noble son of a noble. إِلْهَبُ الْيَوْمَ بَأَنْتُمُ الطَّلَقَةِ You're free today. I forgive you. He said what? لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمْ He said what Yusuf said to his brothers who threw him in a well and left him to die. لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Because that's the state of believers. When they get angry, yes, we get angry. But they realize, what am I really getting angry at? At a test that God sent me? Who am I really angry at? See, you can be humanly angry, but who are you really angry about? If everything is a test from Allah, then who are you really angry at? That's a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ this is, these are days of shukr. You, you, you have two joys. He has a joy when he completes, he breaks his fast because he's completed the ibadah. And then the delight of the food, most of the big ulama said, it's itmam ta'a. It's completing that. That's the farha. It's not the food. It's actually finishing the ibadah. That's in Imam Nawawi. Hai maqam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right? The Prophet was shakur, but he told us to be shakur. One of the arifin said, Hada dhamiru that. Haula ibad that. Hunaka ibad al asma. So that's a high maqam. It's where you're always grateful. وَالشُّكْرُ صَرْفُ الْعَبْدِ مَا أَوْلَاهُ مَوْلَاهُ مِنْ نِعْمَاهُ فِي رِضَاهُ This is what uh, all the ulama taught and Muhammad al-Musawi uh, said is the meaning of shukr, real shukr. Shukr is to utilize what God has given you. اِعْمِرُوا آلَ دَوْرُ Shukran. To utilize what he's given you out of gratitude.